You may continue. We need the jury. Oh, what is it today? What is it today? Can I just ask real quick, Judge, before we bring them down? Um, do you have any idea what our lunch period is going to look like? Uh, it's warm food, so it's going to be whenever it arrives. Okay. It's supposed to come at around noon, but the two times we've had warm food before, they've all come quite early. So let's hope for the best. Could we, but, could I ask your Honor, could we have a 12 to 1 break today? There, there's some additional issues that I made you aware of earlier that may require some extra time. I will, as much as I can, I will accommodate that. But as I say, if the food comes warm, I'm not going to make the jurors wait um, for more than 10 or 15 minutes max. Okay. Just so you know. Till 1. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello? Could yeah. you come down, please? Yep. Mr. Grosskreutz, the last video we watched uh, had some uh, police individuals with their armored vehicles uh, and they appeared to be uh, escorting you away. Would that be fair to say? That is fair to say, yes. What happened after that? Um, after uh, the police officers that uh, uh, responded in the Bearcat or that armored personnel carrier, um, they assisted me getting into the back of it, um, the inside. Um, from what I remember, it's designed. There's two benches on either side with a pretty narrow walkway. Um, from here, uh, I had officers on either side of me. Uh, I had been seated on the floor in between the two bench seats. And then from there, I remember um, having a conversation with um, what I'm going to assume was the medic on that. Uh, I don't know if that was a SWAT team or what the organization of that unit was, but uh, it appeared to me that whoever I was having this interaction with, this conversation with, was the medic for lack of a more specific term. Um, from there, um, from what I remember, um, this SWAT medic um, was attempting to start an IV on me. Um, we then had a conversation regarding whether or not, uh, well, let me back that up. Um, while this medic was trying to start an IV on me, I had begun asking him to apply another tourniquet because my arm was still bleeding. So as far as uh, medical practices can go, if the whatever wound is still bleeding with a single tourniquet, the idea is you want this thing to be very, very tight to stop all blood flow. The idea is um, life over limb. But you can apply another tourniquet or an additional one uh, <clears throat> to assist um, in, in, in stopping the bleeding. Um, and then from there, um, we arrived at the hospital, and the uh, SWAT members, the police officers, opened the back of the door or the back of the back door of the Bearcat. Um, a few of them got out first, and essentially provided a perimeter, um, and then another one or two officers um, helped me get up from, um, so I should clarify, I was sitting down in between uh, the two benches, one officer had helped me up, and then from there I, um, I walked myself into the emergency room. Um, when you say you were at the hospital, is that KMH, uh, Freighter South, down here on uh, just off of Sheridan? That is correct, yes. And what sort of medical treatment did you receive either, either at that hospital or at, at subsequent facilities? Um, <clears throat> upon uh, arriving at the first uh, hospital in the emergency room, um, the tourniquets were left in place. And once you put those on, you want to be very sure before you take them off. There's issues with blood clots and that sort of thing. Um, from there, uh, I remember uh, having my vitals taken, so that includes like pulse, um, blood pressure, um, EKGs, which is uh, heart rhythms. Um, the 
pretty general stuff when anybody goes to the hospital, but then specific to um, my injury, um, they, they being the hospital staff, the ER doctor um, who had been working that shift, um, determined that they were not able to provide adequate treatment for me. So for a little bit of clarification, um, hospitals, at least at least in Wisconsin, are uh, on a tier system. Uh, why don't you ask another question? Sure. So at the first hospital, KMH, uh, they determined they needed you to send you someplace else. Is that fair to say? Yes. Where did you go from there? Um, I don't recall the name of the hospital. Um, I do know that I was transported by ambulance to um, an additional hospital. I remember the ambulance ride only being uh, about five minutes. Um, and then at that hospital, did they treat you or did you have to go someplace else after that? Originally, I was supposed to be treated at that hospital, but given the severity of my injury, um, it was determined that I was going to be uh, transported by Flight for Life to uh, freighter uh, in Milwaukee. And once you got up to freight uh, to freighter in Milwaukee, uh, did you have to go undergo any surgical procedures or anything? I did. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, when I first arrived uh, to freighter in Milwaukee, uh, I was brought into the trauma room. Um, essentially, from there, I uh, I was stripped naked, getting prepped for surgery. Um, and that surgery, from my understanding, is uh, the, the first one uh, is what's called a debridement. Um, essentially, what that is is a, it's a, a very deep cleaning of a of a wound um, to stave off infection. Essentially, it's scraping away the dead tissue. Now, we've heard other testimony that the your when you were shot, it was shortly before midnight on August twenty fifth. Um, were you eventually? taken up to a freighter in Milwaukee sometime overnight? In the early morning, yes. And the surgery, would that have occurred shortly after you got to that hospital? Almost immediately, is, almost immediately after me getting there, yes. Do you recall if there were any other surgical procedures done on you while you were at uh, freighter that early morning? Um, the early morning, I don't believe um, I had any surgeries. Um, I was in the... Uh, the ICU, um, uh, a few a few rooms over from Jacob Blake, and uh, that, like I said, it's an intensive care unit, so it's for serious traumatic injuries or um, medical uh, ailments. Uh, but then from there, I was moved to um, what would essentially be a, a tier down from that, so it's like the long-term ICU, if that makes sense. Um, and then from there, I had, um, I don't recall if it was two or three, but I, I do know I had at least two more of these uh, debridement surgeries. Um, again, that's where it cleans off the tissue. Um, was there eventually uh, surgical procedures done to try and repair the damage to your arm? Yes. When was that? That would have been the Monday, follow, the, the following Monday. And have you undergone more than one of those types of procedures? That specific procedure, no. Okay. Overall, how much treatment have you received since this shooting to try and repair the damage? Uh, I would say about a, a week in the hospital for emergency care. Um, and then from there, uh, several months of, of physical therapy. Um, yeah. Now, when you got to the hospital, one of the hospitals, you said they, they took everything off of you. Did you have anything with you that you had uh, picked up on the street while you were out uh, around that night? Yes, I did. What did you have? Um, I had a uh, spent tear gas canister. I have a exhibit here which has been marked as exhibit number 61, I believe. Is that what the sticker says on there? Okay. Um, I'm going to have Detective Antaramian remove this item and hold it up for the jury. 
Mr. Grosskreutz, is the detective holding up the item that you're referring to? Yes, he is. I would move Exhibit 61 into evidence. Objection? No. Steve. Where did you find that? That would have been maybe 50 feet south on Sheridan from car source. From that 59th Street or, car I'm, source? I'm sorry. Yes, 59th Street car source. Okay. And you said it was spent, meaning whatever originally was there, all the gas had come out. Correct. Is that right? So it's, it wasn't capable of doing any further damage or harm to anyone? Correct. Why did you pick it up? I don't know. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. Okay. So did there come a time in which law enforcement officers came to speak to you at the hospital? That's correct. Did they ask you to sign a release for them to obtain your medical records? They did. And did you, in fact, do so? I did. Did you also provide the um, officers with a uh, statement about what had happened to you? Yes, I did. And did you describe to them the fact that you had been recording uh, the night's events on a Facebook live stream? Yes, I did. When you say a Facebook live stream, is that something that if someone's on Facebook, they could possibly see that if they wanted to? That is correct. Did you also have a copy of that video on your phone? No, not a physical copy. Where was the actual file itself in, in the world, if you will? Um, when you record something on Facebook Live, it, it gets stored in your profile videos, photos. Um, so while I didn't have a physical copy of it on my phone, I was able to access the recording via my Facebook through my phone, if that makes sense. Were the police, did you make them aware of the fact that there was that video out there? Yes, I did. Around the time that you were in the hospital that night after the shooting, in the early morning hours, etc., cetera, um, did you become concerned about your own personal safety? Yes, I did. Can you tell us about that? After, <clears throat> after the events of August 25th, um, it was made known to me pretty quickly that uh, people online um, and in person um, were... Sure sounds like it. It goes to his state of mind, Your Honor. Uh, there's what state of mind about what? Cooperating. Um, this is intimidation. See, the rule is you can't buttress credibility unless it's attacked. It has been with the detective's testimony, Your Honor. There's been questioning over his cooperation level already. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection and, and allow the evidence. But and we're working again with the hearsay rule. Um, so I'm not going to permit the evidence to be considered as proof of what he may have seen or heard about what was on the internet, um, but rather as proof of circumstances operating on his mind. Does that make sense? So it isn't to be taken as true uh, if, let's, for example, I'm, I'm gathering you're going to suggest there was some suggestion of harm 
potential harm. It's not being offered to prove that there was, in fact, a true risk from any particular source of any harm, but rather um, what he concluded based upon the information that he heard. Make sense? Okay. Thank you. Please continue telling us about um, your concerns for your safety. Um, so, like I had just said, um, it had be made aware to me that uh, people online were making threats, um, going above just personal opinion, um, as well as um, people coming outside my place of residence, family members, including my mother, my grandmother, an aunt that I had hardly talked to. Um, and that became, that, that became very concerning for me. Uh, Did there come a time in which the investigating officers asked you for access to everything on your cell phone? Through my attorney, yes, I did. Was that something that you were interested in turning over to law enforcement? At the time, I was, I, I was under the impression that I was fully cooperating, and so yes, uh, that is something that I was willing to do. Did that actually happen? No, that did not. Do you know why not? At the time, no. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't know. Did you personally ever make a decision to refuse to give over all of the contents of your cell phone to law enforcement? Did you personally? I never personally refused that, no. May I approach her? Mr. Grosskreutz, I have put in front of you a document which has been marked as exhibit number 68. Do you recognize that document? I do. Can you tell us what that is? Essentially, this document that I'm looking at is an official form um, for uh, informed consent um, to disclose um, evidence, personal, personal property, personal records. Do you know whose form that is? My form. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, which agency or, or, or entity created that form, if you know? It is marked by um, the Kenosha Police Department and the Kenosha County District Attorney. And is this a form that was presented to you by a law enforcement officer so that they could get access to your medical records? Yes. Did you sign that form? Yes, I did. What day did you sign it? August 26th, 2020. I'd move Exhibit 68 into evidence. Objection? No. Received. After everything that you've been through, Mr. Grosskreutz, do you still have any um, physical issues with your arm? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Uh, apart from the um, obvious loss of tissue, uh, muscle doesn't grow back. Um, aside from that, um, and, and perhaps things being difficult, like larger, heavier things being difficult uh, to lift, I do have um, a neurological deficit on my arm. So I would say about here, about here where the injury is. Essentially, all of this, and through my thumb, through my thumb, I'm not able to feel. Um, I am able to move it, uh, but there is no sensation in that area. And I just want to, for the record, demonstrate you held up your right arm. You indicated that the wound was near the crux of your elbow. Correct. And you indicated that there was no feeling in an area of the arm, which if I Characterizing this correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it looked like you were describing the top of your forearm running from the elbow down to your right thumb. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. In the area where that 
wound was. Did you have a tattoo? I did. Is that tat I'm sorry, I, I still do. And what does that tattoo say? Um, tattoo uh, is a image of a uh, pretty prominent uh, symbol in uh, the healthcare field. Um, it's the snake wrapped around the cross, or sorry, around the uh, around the staff. Um, on the top, there is a banner that says "Do no harm," uh, meaning "Do n o harm." It's a banner on the top here, and then on the bottom, um, there was a, um, a banner that said do no harm, K-N-O-W, harm, um, yes. And that's one of the ma mantras of the medical industry is first do no harm. Correct. One moment, please. All right, uh, cross examine. So, Mr. Grosskreutz, on uh, the tw morning of the 26th of uh, August, do you remember telling uh, the officer who interviewed you, sometime during the incident, my Gen 4 Glock 27 that has a belt clip attached fell off my waist? Do you remember that? I don't recall saying that, no. Exhibit number 69 for identification. Do you recognize that document? I do. Okay. And that's, if I could be fair, I'm not going to stand by you the whole time, so I'm sorry, but um, is that your signature? That is. Okay. And it appears that that is, um, it says on 82520 at 11 30 p.m. at 6300 Sheridan Road, and then it goes on a narrative version of your statement. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And if I could, toward the end of that large paragraph, you'd agree it says, sometime during the incident, my Gen 4 Glock 27 that had a belt clip attached fell off my waist. Correct? Correct. Okay. That's a lie, right? I wouldn't say that's a lie, no. You didn't take the Glock out of your back here and run with it? I did. So it didn't fall off your waist, it was in your hand. That's correct. So you would say that's not a lie? No, I, I would say it isn't. Okay, and you told that to multiple officers, isn't that true? I don't know. Same exhibit, sir. The next sentence. I told multiple officers that I dropped my firearm, right? Correct. Okay. Now. You didn't drop your firearm. You were chasing Mr. Rittenhouse with your gun, right? You yes. Are... You were chasing him with your gun, yes? No. You didn't chase him down Sheridan Road, pulling your gun, chasing after him. That's a lie. You're saying that didn't happen. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but I wasn't chasing the defendant. You were running after him? No. No. Okay. Did you ever get charged for not telling the truth to the police about dropping your gun? No. Did you ever tell the police in here on this statement that you actually had a firearm in your hand and pointed it at the defendant? No, I did not. You never told him you had a gun at all in terms of 
and you had an interaction with Mr. Rittenhouse. True? That is correct. And I know you said you don't know, but Jason Lakowski testified that he picked up that firearm that he believes belonged to you, and there was one in the chamber. Do you dispute that that could be true? No, I do not. Now, you had talked about your purpose of being there that evening. You're a member of our Wisconsin Revolution, are you not? No, I'm not. You're a member of the People's Revolution? No, I'm not. Have you spoken at their rallies? I have at one. And during that rally, uh, have you made statements such as, long live the revolution? I have. And you have no affiliation with them, though? Affiliation, yes. Okay, there's some of those people in the crowd today, aren't there? Yes. Now, your first statement to uh, Officer, I think it's Birch, uh, on the morning of uh, the 26th, um, when he's asking you, uh, about what happened. If I have this right, you don't explain at all to him as to how you approached Mr. Rittenhouse with your gun, correct? Can I, am I able to, I don't know. You don't I don't, know? I don't, I don't remember specifically on that document, okay. no. In fact, Six hours after you had been shot, you had a lawyer, right? Correct. Okay. And you wanted to stop the interview with the police because you had a lawyer, right? That is correct. And this is a civil lawyer, right? That is one thing that she represents, yes. Okay. And she's in court today, right? Yes, she is. Okay. And I know this wasn't addressed, but you have... This is a notice of claim, is that right? That is correct. Okay. Filed on your behalf by your lawyer, right? That is correct, yes. Making a notice or telling, among others, the city and county of Kenosha that you would like $10 million. True? That is correct. Did you read this? I did. So are you aware in this document, you never mentioned that you actually possessed a firearm. You know that? That is correct. You left that part out, right? That is correct. Judge, I would move 62. Is there objection? No. Steve? You then had, shortly thereafter, I want to say um, in October, I'm going to show you what is Exhibit 63, you have now filed a lawsuit in federal court. Is that right? That is correct. Did you read that? Yes, I did. Okay. In that document, you again failed to mention that you possessed a firearm. Is that right? That is correct. So you, in these documents that you are filing with courts, you are leaving out the fact that you had possessed a firearm when this, when you were shot, right? That is correct. Okay. And this is, so to be fair, uh, this is your testimony today and how this case turns out has a, has an impact on your ability to try to collect your 10 million, right? That is correct. So if he's convicted, if Mr. Rittenhouse is convicted, your chance of getting 10 million bucks is better, right? I'm not entirely sure how that plays out. 
haven't had any conversations with your lawyer about well, that? I'm not going to ask him yeah. conversations with his lawyer. Okay, fair enough. Um, you, you're aware that if Mr. Rittenhouse is convicted, your chances of getting the $10 million are better? I'm going to object, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered, and I don't think he's got a basis to answer that. Judge, I Well, I have sustained on the first ground. I would move 63. Uh, objection? No. Receive. So you um, were asked by uh, Attorney Binger about a live stream that you had been running that evening, right? That is correct. All right. And there are, as far as I can tell, three instances in which you see, at least on that live stream, you see Mr. Rittenhouse. Do you agree with that? Yes, I would. Okay. Do you have them? And during that first contact, which we'll see, you're filming, you had talked a little bit about this, you were filming him. 
girl, you can go home. <laughs> Fucking stupid. And that's you, right? Speaking? Yeah. That is correct. So you say you can go home, you fucking stooge. Right? Correct. Okay. He didn't do anything to you, did he? No. You didn't, do, you didn't see him threaten anyone, did you? No, I did not. You didn't see him act aggressive toward anyone, did you? No, I did not. In fact, again, whether you agree that he's a medic or not, he's asking people if they need help. Agreed? That is correct. Okay. Then... Mr. Banger had asked you about this one, and this is um, the time that Mr. Rittenhouse is, you, you videotape him. That's fine right there. Go ahead. Hey, hey, your job isn't to be in the street. You got to stay on your property. That's why you got problems already with people. So you see him pulling a dumpster out of the road, right? Correct. And you'd agree on normal situation, a dumpster's not supposed to be in the road? In normal situations, yes. And you hear somebody telling him, hey, that's not your job. You're not to do that, right? That is correct. He doesn't react to that person at all, does he? No, he does not. He doesn't threaten that person in any way? No, he does not. He doesn't point his firearm at that person? No, he does not. He, for, to be fair, he ignores that person, doesn't he? I think that's a fair way of putting it. Okay. And in terms of the the next time you really see him is your contact with him on Sheridan Road after the shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum, right? That is correct. Okay. Now, you were asked, were you armed with a firearm? And you said that you were. One Mr. Banger said, what do you bring? And you said, keys, wallet, whatever else, and a gun, right? I did say that, yeah. Kind of standard operating procedure for you out in the summer of 2020? Uh, not just the summer of 2020. Oh, so you had carried your firearm at times previous to that? That's correct. And you're doing that for personal protection, correct? Correct. And you're carrying it concealed, are you not? That is correct. It's unlawful for you to carry it concealed. Is that not true? Unlawful? Yeah, you can't carry a concealed weapon without a, a CCW permit, right? That is correct, yes. You have to open carry. You have to have, you've been talking about people with their guns out. You have to carry it with it out if you don't have a CCW permit, right? That is correct. And you didn't have a CCW permit, did you? I did have a CCW permit. It wasn't valid, correct? After the fact, yes, I found out that it was not valid. So, have you been charged for unlawfully carrying a firearm? No, I have not. So you're carrying a gun for protection in your, if I have it right, back here, right? That is correct. And I'm motioning into my, kind of my thumb here. Correct. Okay. Now, your first contact with Mr. Rittenhouse I think you had testified that you believed that he said to you um, that he is that he was going to the police or that he was working with the police, right? That is correct. Well, on your statement on the twenty sixth, which is the first statement you gave to law enforcement, right? Correct. You told law enforcement, I heard the guy say, quote, that he pulled the gun on me first, unquote, right? That is correct. So you never say to the police during your interview, he told me he was working with you guys. You never tell him that, do you? That is correct. So when you make contact with Mr. Rittenhouse, tell me if this is fair. And I'm not, Mr. Bingers asked uh, witnesses to do this, so I'm going to ask you to do the same probably watched videos, you've probably seen all this. I'm asking you to put yourself back there at that time, okay? You know shots are fired, right? Correct. Okay. And the only information that you have is Mr. Rittenhouse saying, according to you, 
he pulled the gun on me first. Right? Correct. And based on that, you believe there's an active shooter? Not solely on that, but yes. You don't have any information, correct? I had minimal information. And in fact, what he says to you was, I'm going to the police, correct? That is correct. And he's running toward the police, isn't he? That is correct. Okay. So what you, and tell me if this is right. You have no idea what happened with Mr. Rosenbaum, do you? I, apart from, no. I just, no. On that day? Correct. Okay. And he tells you, he's running, and he tells you, I'm, whatever he tells you, I'm going to the police or what you think is, um, he pulled the gun first, and he's running away from you, right? He's running north on Sheridan Road. Correct. And he's running away from where you're standing. True? Correct. You at that point pull a firearm out from your belt and begin to chase him. True? That is not true. I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 35. Can you take a peek at that for a second? That's a picture of you, is that right? On the right-hand side with the blue cap and... Yeah, yeah. you can look there where yeah. this is you, right? right? Correct. Okay. And you're digging into your waistband in the back, are you not? Yes. That's where your gun is located, is it not? That is correct. Okay. Do you see Kyle Rittenhouse in this picture? I don't think so, no. Okay. So, if we can be fair here, this isn't him, right? No, it is not. And you don't believe that's him? I don't believe so, no. Okay. And you'd agree none of these other people are him either? I think that's a fair thing to say, yes. Okay. What do you think, to the best of your ability, how far that guy's ahead of Uh, it'd be hard to tell, but based on what I can see here, maybe 30 feet. Okay. So you believe, based on this, Mr. Rittenhouse is more than 30 feet ahead of you because he's not behind that guy, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So he's 30 feet, at least 30 feet ahead of you. You look like at that point you're moving. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. So with him 30 feet ahead of you, running away from you, at that point you pull your firearm and begin to chase him, correct? No. You don't begin to chase him? Nope. No, I do not. You head in the direction that he's running, yes? Correct. But you just happen to be running in that direction? It has nothing to do with Kyle Rittenhouse running in that direction? No, it does have to do with the defendant running in that direction, yes. Okay. So you are trying to chase him down? No. You can hear people yelling at that point, get him, get his ass, things like that, right? That is correct, yes. Did you hear, there's one that I've heard on this, and I don't know if you've heard it, cranium that boy. Did you hear that? I've heard it after the fact. Um, in that moment, uh, I, I do not recall hearing that, now. Okay. But you acknowledge you hear get him and get his ass. Correct, I do. Okay. So fair at that point you believe these people are those people are chasing him down yes I do and the I'm gonna use the word mob you use whatever word you want it's getting bigger as they're running isn't it more people are joining this I think that's a fair thing to say and you believe well tell me if this is true you were concerned for Kyle Rittenhouse's safety. Yes, I was. You were concerned because you saw, and I'm going to refer to him as the only way we refer to him, jump kick man. So you see this guy kick him in the face. True? 
I do not see Jump Kick Man kick him in the face. You see him attempt to kick him in the face? From my perspective, I didn't see any specific motion regarding kicking. Um, but it is fair to say that I, I did observe Jump Kick Man going over the defendant. Okay. And he's going, if you remember, he's going over the defendant with his foot in the air, correct? I don't recall that. You have a picture of <laughs> And before I bring it up, to be fair, you're making up ground on Mr. Rittenhouse, correct? As you're running in his direction. Correct, correct. Okay, you, you eventually catch him. Correct. Come up to him, right? Correct. Okay. Turn around, just to, or whichever you want. To you see that going on, correct? Correct. Okay, so if we're being honest with one another, he appears to me to try to kick him in the face, right? In this photograph, yes. Okay. You, were you how far away from this when it's going on are you? I don't recall how far away I was exactly when this uh, action occurred. You're a matter of Right? I think that's a fair thing to say. Uh, okay. Close. All right. And you, you're you seeing this, so you are having some concern, maybe as a medic or your, while you're training, uh, that Kyle Rittenhouse is in physical danger. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So, and you believe he's in physical danger because he's being attacked, right? That's fair. That's a fair thing to say, yes. Okay. So you see this. Then you see, can you bring up the Huber picture, please? Then you see Mr. Then you know that's, you didn't know it then, but you know now that's Anthony Huber, right? Correct. Okay. And you see, you saw this happening, right? Correct. And it was, no more from me to you away probably at that point, true? I don't recall, but I, that's probably fair. Part? Yes. Okay. And in fact, you had mentioned to the officers that you even recalled Mr. Huber holding on to the trucks of that skateboard when he was striking him, right? Correct. And that, to be fair, as a medic, that concerned you, did it not? I think any time that there is a risk of head trauma, that it's a risk. Yeah, no, fair enough. So. You believe, in this picture, one of the reasons you wanted to intervene was you believe that Mr. Rittenhouse was in danger of being seriously hurt, right? In part, yes. And you had mentioned to the police that evening that you tried telling Mr. Huber, you just said the guy, but you tried telling the guy to stop hitting him with the skateboard. Is that right? That is what I put in my statement, yes. Is that true? With the benefit of hindsight, I don't believe that to be true, no. Okay, so when you told that to the police that you told the guy with the skateboard to stop hitting him, that, that was, that's not correct, that's not true. That is correct. <clears throat> Now, your original statement then to the police 
was I tried telling the guy to stop hitting him with the skateboard. The guy on the ground then turned over, racked the weapon, and pointed his gun at me and shot me, right? That is correct, yes. Okay. Um, you omitted the idea, you omitted the fact that you ran up on him and had a Glock pistol in your hand, right? You left that out. Correct. Would you think in a case where you are shot that providing the police information that you were actually possessing a firearm at the time would be relevant? I think that's fair, yes. Okay. But you didn't think it was relevant to tell him that day, correct? It's not that I didn't think it wasn't relevant. Um, after the defendant had shot me, I had just gotten out of surgery when the Kenosha police officers had arrived and just gone through one of the most traumatic experiences in my life, both emotionally and physically. I'd just gotten out of surgery. I had just been sedated. I was on pain meds. So, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt you. Sorry. Um, it wouldn't have been a purposeful uh, omission. You were asked at that same statement what you did for work, and you refused to answer that, right? That is correct. So you made a conscious decision to not answer that. That is correct. You weren't so drugged that you couldn't answer that question, right? I refused because I was worried for my safety. My point is mm -hmm. that you had a thoughtful process not to answer that. True? That is correct. You told this officer specifically what Mr. Rittenhouse was wearing, correct? That is correct. You had a thoughtful process, even though you just got out of surgery and were drugged and whatever else was going on, which I understand, you were still able to answer all those questions to the best of your ability and they were accurate, right? To the best of my ability, yes. Okay, so the fact that you failed to mention that you possessed a firearm when you were shot and that you dropped it, were those things that you forgot because of your medication? I would say not only the medication, but also uh, the traumatic experience that I had just gone through. And you understand it's the only information that you appeared to have forgotten that puts you with a gun directly in front of him, right? That is correct. Now, you are also then interviewed again by law enforcement in September, is that right? That is correct. You bring your lawyer? Correct. Mr. Binger's there? Not in person. Okay, but he's present in the... He is attending the meeting, yes. Okay. And there were three... He Sorry, he was present uh, via Zoom. Okay, and there were a total, if you remember, three prosecutors present, right? The only two people who I were aware were their official uh, capacity was um, the lead detective, Ben Antaramian, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, um, and then uh, Mr. Binger. Uh, okay, but so as for the other people, I'm, I'm sure they mentioned their names, but... Those were the two people that I that stuck out, I guess I should say. So the people that you recall, Detective Antaramian, Mr. Binger, your lawyer, and you. Correct. And you were asked on that day, which would be, now this is, that would be your second statement, you were asked about what had happened, right? Correct. And had you viewed some of the video between the shooting and the interview that you gave on, I think it was the 24th of September. I can't say for sure, but I would say it's a very fair guess that I had at least seen something at that point, or by that point. And in that interview, You don't answer any questions about the shooting, do you? No, I do not. <laughs> this lead detective on a homicide case 
where you are also shot, is trying to gather information to figure out exactly what went on and you refuse to answer questions about that, right? About specifically about the shooting? Yeah. That is correct. Was that your decision or your lawyer's decision? That was the advice that my counsel gave me. So your counsel wouldn't let you answer questions about your involvement, true? I wouldn't say that she wouldn't let me, but she advised against it. So your statements about what actually happened, first time that we're getting an insight as to what actually happened is today, right? I don't think that's accurate. Well, on the 24th, you refused to answer questions, right? The 24th of? September. Correct. And the day after the incident, you acknowledge you left out the fact that you even had a gun, right? That is correct. You, Mr. Binger asked you about this. You were asked for permission to look through your phone, right? I do recall that, yes. You never actually gave your phone to Detective Antaramian to look through, did you? My phone was picked up off the street the night of the 20, the night of the 25th. So no, I didn't give my phone to anybody. Somebody, and I'm assuming a police officer had picked it up. My question to you, that wasn't my question. To you. My question to you was, Detective Antaramian asked you for permission to look through your phone and you never gave him your phone, true? I never gave him permission to look through my phone, no. Are That's, you aware that he had a search warrant for your phone? No, I was not. So, so if I can, uh, Mr. Grosskreutz, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the video, okay? Are we good on time? Uh, I haven't been notified that the lunch is here, but uh, I gotta pop up with a meeting in about 15. Are you heard what? 15, 20 minutes. I said from you. now. Yes, for new. Okay. Yeah. It's up to you. Well, do you are you fine with time? You would ask for twelve to one. Right. You are in the middle of an examination, so I will. Uh, I'll hear from you guys as to what you want to do. Um, if it's not here, I'm fine. I'm ready to continue. I just didn't know if he had a problem. I was hoping for an hour. Whenever we, whenever. We okay. Can I'll give you an hour whenever we stop. Thank you. Okay. okay so just, I'm gonna have you stop it. I do. Okay. He's, would you like Sister Marcy Ann's pointer? Oh, sure. It's up to you. I don't. You, you're welcome to use your glasses if you want. He's got it. Oh, he's got it. You see this gentleman right here, right? I do. Okay. Now you agree he advanced on what ran after came up to Mr. Rittenhouse, right? Can you rewind just slightly? Can you just go? Do you, do you have to go back? You agree that he runs up to Mr. Rittenhouse and then applies the brakes, right? I do. Okay, and you'd agree that he's feet, me to you away. And that's a okay. fair assessment, yes. Two, three feet. He's advancing on Mr. Rittenhouse and you'd agree, he puts his hands up and Mr. Rittenhouse never fires his gun, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now. You're off screen here at this point, right? You haven't come into the frame yet? No, I have not. Okay. That is, for lack of a better term, this gentleman right here. This is Jump Kick Man, right? Uh, I, I believe so, yes. Okay. So, you can play it. So, you now see that Jump Kick Man kicked Mr. Rittenhouse in the face and two shots are fired, 
correct? Uh, with this video, yes. Okay. You hear that, right? Uh, in the moment, yes, I did hear it. Okay. Now, if you can see, and we'll play it, I don't, I'm not trying to trick you. This is Mr. Huber, correct? Um, it is hard to see with whatever is blocking. Okay. Um, play it for a second. Okay. That's Mr. Huber, right? That is correct, yes. Okay. Now, this person here that's just coming into the frame, that's you. That is correct, yes. Okay. And you are running, correct? Yes, I was. Okay. Now, you had originally said that you wanted, um, you were going to tell Mr. Huber to stop eating them, but now you understand that you didn't say anything. You were just running, whatever word you want. You're moving towards Mr. Rittenhouse, right? That is correct, yes. Okay. We just heard a shot, yes? Correct. Okay. And to be fair, that you put on the brakes, right? You were running, you then almost stop in your tracks. Fair enough? Correct. Okay. And I don't know if your arms are up at that point, but it looks like you're kind of protecting your head at that point. Is that fair? That is correct. Okay. How far do you think you are away from him at that point to the best of your ability? I would say about there, uh, between... Um, me and you? You and I, correct. So, three feet? Three to five. Okay. Now, at that point, you have your hands up, right? Yes, I do. Now, you probably don't notice him at the time. But this guy's holding up what looks like a wooden club of some type? Some sort of wooden object, yes. Okay. So, your hands are up. And at that point, he has not fired at you, correct? No, he has not. Okay. It's going to be quick. You would agree at this point, you are dropping your hand, you are loading your front foot, and you are moving toward Mr. Rittenhouse at that point, true? Yes. Okay. So, when you... were shot, can you bring up the photo? You'd agree, and now wait, how close do you think you are to him at that point? Three feet, okay. uh, if it was five feet before it would, so. So tell me if I've got the lay of the land. <laughs> at this point, you're holding a loaded chambered Glock 27 in your right hand, yes? That is correct, yes. You are advancing on Mr. Rittenhouse, who is seated on his butt, right? That is correct. You're moving forward, and your right hand drops down with your gun. Your hands are no longer up, and now they're, the gun is pointed in the direction of Mr. Rittenhouse. Agree? I'll give you a, a picture. Maybe that'll help. What's the next one? These happen, not by the time. Oh. So, um, Mr. Groskutz, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 67. Uh, that's a photo of you, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, that's Mr. Rittenhouse? Correct. Okay. Now, you agree your firearm is pointed at Mr. Rittenhouse, correct? Yes. Okay. And once your firearm is pointed at Mr. Rittenhouse, that's when he fires his gun. Yes? No. Sir, look, I don't want to... Does this look like right now your arm is being shot? That looks like my bicep being vaporized, yes. Okay. And it's being vaporized as you're pointing your gun directly at him. Yes? Yes. 
Okay, so when you were standing three to five feet from him with your arms up in the air, he never fired, right? Correct. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. You had now you had mentioned that you believe that he was re-racking. I think you. I don't know much about guns, but you had mentioned that you believed he was re-racking his gun or something, right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Now this is your. I think this is right. This is your tweet from November fifth. So during this trial, you're tweeting out. Yes. Yes. And you tweet out to whoever these people are, make sure you look and listen for the defendant's firearm malfunction, and then you have a, a winky emoji face. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Okay. So this is, the fifth was yesterday? That would have been Friday. Friday. Time's flying, Judge. Um, so Friday at 7.45, you, and what's the winky emoji face for? I believe that was in response to uh, whoever the original, um, whoever the original poster is uh, on there. Uh, I don't know what the original post was, but it was more than likely in response to uh, this person's opinion that they had posted. Now, you, you had said, that you were looking for a non-lethal way to end this interaction. That is, that is correct, yes. Yet you pulled your gun out and began, I'm going to use the word chase. You, been, you began chasing or running after a man who was running away from you, correct? That is correct. Now, you had said, and you were asked about the do no harm and, and the tattoo on your arm and things like that, right? Um, you have some regrets from that evening, don't you? No. Well, Jacob Marshall's your roommate, isn't he? No, he's not. He was your roommate, correct? He was, yes. Okay. And Jacob Marshall came to visit you in the hospital. Is that right? Yes, he did. Okay. And I know he's taken it down, but not before we saw it. He posted something on either Twitter or Facebook with you, right? Correct. Do you remember that? Remember what? The picture that you guys took in the hospital together? Uh, yes, I do. Um, we need to talk about this. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe we should. Uh, 
Um, I assume you have more questions beyond this? Not a ton, but we should probably get this cleared up. Yeah, we might as well. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, please don't talk about the case during the break. I assume your uh, lunch will be here shortly. Uh, don't read, watch, or listen to any account of the trial. Um, okay, see you in a little bit. Uh, see you at about 1.15. Thank you. Um, why isn't this hearsay? Well, let's, we'll start I there. Judge, I believe I can ask Mr. Grosskreutz if he said it. That's not hearsay. Did you say this to Mr. Marshall? Um, I'm not asking. Well, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. well go ahead. Go ahead. I, he can deny it, right? And then I can call Mr. Marshall, which he's not, he was in court. Now he's under subpoena. Oh, he's here. Well, he left. He Where got is he? I don't know. He was sitting in court. He got served with a subpoena. And he is gone. Well, let's find out right now whether, whether he's here. Because if he isn't here and he was served with a subpoena to appear when? Wednesday. Yeah, not till Wednesday. Okay. He's going to be in our case in chief. Okay. So okay. I believe I can ask a witness if they've made a statement. If that witness denies it, then I would call somebody to impeach that witness. Uh, State? I agree with everything, but what was being marked there was a Facebook post from Jacob Marshall. And that's my objection. Jacob Marshall's Facebook post is, is hearsay. They can call him and testify. I, 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 he's not asking to offer the exhibit, I don't think. Not, not, not yet, anyway. He's as, he, he wants to ask him about the content. That, as far as that goes, Your Honor, that's fine. I, was, I anticipated the exhibit was about to be used since it was in the process of being marked. And that's why I said, Your Honor, I'm going to be objecting on hearsay grounds. Because the exhibit is hearsay. So, Judge, I'm going to ask him if he's in this picture which he is, and if that's Mr. Marshall in the picture, which I believe it is, I'm not going to, at this point, I'm not going to ask that the jury see it, but I'm going to ask him about the content of it, and then based on his answer, I'm going to call Mr. Marshall to testify if he denies it. Um. Like well, uh, certainly the inquiring about a statement allegedly made by the uh, witness is would not uh, be hearsay. Um, but there certainly is a um, coiled snake uh, of uh, hearsay, potential hearsay, so we have to be careful. I, I'm not going to... I think it's appropriate that he acknowledges that he's in the picture. Um, and then I'm not gonna, I'm not okay. gonna do anything else with it other than to ask him the question. Excellent. What more could as I? Long as, the, as long as the jury doesn't see that post right now, that's my my concern. Because that's your saying. Okay. And, and I'm not gonna do that. So okay. thank you. What time would you like to start, Judge? One fifteen, please. <laughs> 